Hey everybody, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description of this video for some of the best online retailers. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got a really fun video to share with you guys. I'm gonna be going over um, the knife case that I recently got. And I'm gonna show you everything that's in here just for fun. So it's kind of a collection update video and it's kind of some information on the case that I got because I really like this. This is excellent. I should have done this a long time ago. Uh, it's really, really cool. If you caught one of my more recent live streams, you'll know I kind of went over this a little bit, but not everybody watches the live stream. So I figured I want to share this with the rest of uh, my audience. Thank you so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. It's Your support absolutely means the world to me right now. Thank you so much. If you'd like to check out my Patreon, there's a link for it right down in the description. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. If you have heard about what's going on here with my channel recently, uh, you subscribing and watching my content means, you know, it, it, it's it's ever more important. So thank you so much to everybody who's been supporting me right now. Speaking of live streams, I know a lot of you are expecting me to do part two of my 50,000 subscriber giveaway this weekend. Because of what happened here recently, I am at a loss to explain whether or not that's still something I'm allowed to do. So uh, we're going to postpone that until I have more information, but I will still be doing a live stream tonight because it's Saturday. So if you want to join the live stream, have some fun, kick back and talk about knife stuff, uh, join me tonight. If you're watching this video on the day that it was uploaded, join me tonight at nine o'clock central standard time. All right. So what is the case? This is a uh, Pelican. 1450 case and I know a lot of people are going to be quick to point out that is the exact same thing as the Apache 3800 case and it's way more expensive than the Apache 3800 case um yeah it's pretty much the same this finish on the top is different and these little sections these reinforcement sections are um not nearly all over the place it's actually more reinforced on the back than the uh Pel or the Apache 3800 so for those of you who have seen that video where that guy backs over this and the Apache 3800 with a three quarter ton pickup, you're probably thinking the Apache exploded and the Pelican case survived, so it's the better case. I mean, it did survive, but I mean, how often are we gonna be backing over our Pelican cases with a pickup, right? As far as normal things that you're gonna do with this, the, both cases were waterproof. Both cases, um, you know, he put like an egg inside of both of them uh, and dropped them from a high point. They were both fine, the egg was fine on the inside, I think for most of the tests, right? Um, this has the automatic pressure control and the other one has the manual pressure control. I, it's kind of like, you know, if I was going to buy a new TV and I watched a test video of somebody backing over a TV with a three quarter ton pickup and it didn't break, I'd be really impressed. But I don't know that it would really make me want to spend that much more money than a TV that did break, but still shows me exactly what I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one of those things where it's like, it's neat to know. I just, that's not the reason I bought it. I bought it because the sections on top of the um, Apache case um, didn't allow me nearly as much room to put stickers. They were really like ultra divided and stuff like that. I also like the finish of this one a little bit better. So, I mean, it's kind of silly to spend a lot more money on a case like this just for that reason. Um, but I did, right? The Apache 3800 comes in at something like 30 to $45. The Pelican case that you're seeing here, depending on where you're looking online, will come in probably between $120 and $145, which is a major difference. You can make that choice for yourself. This is just the choice that I made. The foam on the inside, what is this? This is Nalpak foam. If you actually go to the Nalpak Group website, you can buy the case and the foam together. This is the 40 count or the, um, the foam that fits both the 3800 and the Pelican case, and it is pre-cut. You can buy foam that will cut, you know, that you can cut yourself to fit whatever it is that you um, like to collect. I'll tell you right now, if you're a fan of larger knives, especially like you Cold Steel fans um, who are collecting knives like the Cold Steel Formax or the Espada or the Voyager, these types of knives don't fit. They're too tall and they're too wide. So knives like that, like truly XL knives are not going to fit. You'd have to have custom foam that was cut to lay the knives down like this, maybe even layered foam, right? In which case you still can't fit nearly as many in the same case, but that is an option if you really want to have a case like this because seriously, these cases, these types of cases are really, really awesome. Both of them have, uh, or both uh, types of cases have these areas right here where you can use padlocks, like if you shut it, right? You can use a padlock to secure it right there and there are a million different locks out there. Um, I'd recommend getting something that has some level of extra security. The only reason for locking this stuff down here is so that my kids don't get into it, which was a huge motivation uh, for picking up a case like this. 
they're not even strong enough to open the latches on these things, let alone pick the lock, right? Um, or, find, you know, obviously, got to make sure that I... Whether you go combination or key, you got to make sure that you keep that type of stuff secure. Um, but, yeah, that's the information there. I'm sure you guys are wondering about depth and all that stuff. So, uh, knives like the uh, Combat Troodon, I'll just give you a quick example of the biggest knives that I keep in here. The Combat Troodon or the SR1 Lite. These are about as big of knives that you'd want to keep in there. Uh, the uh, Combat Troodon being a little bit longer, including the glass breaker at about, we coming in here, about five and a half inches and body across about an inch and a quarter, right? Um, so they don't need to sink all the way down into the holes because the top of the you can see this foam up here, right? The top of that sort of pushes them down and, and keeps them held firmly in place um, so they don't rattle around. The ones that are smaller or sink below the holes do rattle around in there and kind of bump around, but they're surrounded by foam, so they're okay. I kind of like, you know, I prefer that they are fitting tightly and these knives that stick up just a little bit do exactly that. So uh, let's take a measurement here of each of these holes if you're gonna go this route with this foam exactly. Height. You're looking at about one and three quarter inches. Uh, this the width three quarters of an inch, and then your depth on these holes is coming in at whoops, about four and an eighth. Mm, yeah, four and an eighth. It's not quite four and a quarter. So that's what you're looking at there, and those are the biggest knives that I keep in there. The widest knives or the tallest knives that I've found will just barely fit the ones that I have in here that I can give you a good example of. These two guys are tall. We're looking at the Microtech uh, Stitch and the Strider uh, Three Quarter AR. Um, their height is fine. Height is fine, um, but they're you know how tall the blade is right here. You know, this, especially this harpoon notch right there is really rubbing up against the foam, which is fine. It's going to leave like a line in there, um, but it'll fit. It'll work. I hope you guys have all the information that you wanted there in terms of what knives will fit and what knives won't. I know you guys want me to get these knives out and take a look at them, so let's go ahead and do that. Up here on the first two rows are a lot of the more expensive stuff. We have the, of course, the Demco 8020, MG8020 in titanium. My newly acquired Demco 8020 in G10 that was meant to be given away, but you guys ended up voting for the Sebenza instead, so I kept that one because I had to pay for both. Of course, we have the Combat Troodon Hellhound uh, Signature Series. That one's really cool, like that. Um, we have what you guys just saw there, of course, the Strider 3 quarter AR. Um, by the way, a lot of these knives, like if you're interested in picking them up, a lot of them are linked right down in the description at various retailers, so I'd invite you to check those out. Some of them are just not available, though, uh, and that would include like the um, uh, Sharp by Design Evo Typhoon uh, Harpoon Tanto in Damasteel. Very cool. Uh, a new pride and joy. This is the Shirogorov Quantum. Extremely expensive, but I've always wanted a Shirogorov. Um, and so I, you know, put a little fun together and saved for a few months and managed to finally get that one. We have, of course, the ZT0392. This was originally a uh, BWBRZ or Blackwash Bronze. And I replaced the bronze hardware because it kind of faded with use over time um, with some uh, standard satin. Um, if you're wondering, it's the Eclipse hardware that fits that. My current XM18 user AKA the workhorse is a Gen 6 S35VN Harpoon Spanto, full titanium, and this is unmilled titanium. I think you guys are pretty familiar with that one. Love that guy. We have a knife that I've had for a little bit, but it has a new uh, mod on it. The XM24 Harpoon Spanto with the titanium textured scale, which was just recently released. Finally, after like seven or eight years, he wasn't making full-size titanium scales for the XM24. He finally dropped them on his website, and I was quick to uh, get in there and grab one. That was actually thanks to Jed. Uh, you know who you are on Instagram. He uh, uh, DMs me immediately on Instagram and said, hey, they're here. Um, so thank you very much for doing that. We have, of course, the Dark Horse XM24. By the way, this guy doesn't have a nickname yet. So if you'd like to uh, offer me up a nickname for the, the newest uh, XM knife that I've got. Got the workhorse, got the dark horse. I don't know what the heck we call that. Um, this is carbon fiber and black stone washed titanium, which is why it has more of a reflective finish than the black wash or the black DLC. Those are three completely different finishes. This is a CPM 20 CV Spanto black hardware. Why do I have that one screw turned around backwards? It's because it's got the steel flame 
uh, shield there on the front, which was uh, something that uh, somebody from the community allowed me to buy. So thank you very much. Those are rare. They don't serve any utilitarian function, um, but they're just hard to get. I mean, this, this is bothering me how it's not centered. There, we centered up. Can we get it in? There we go. Uh, we have, of course, the Microtech Stitch, uh, another knife that's kind of hard to get right now. Really wish they did one of these in a manual variant, um, but I'm still happy with this. This is the most overbuilt and easily the most powerful automatic knife that I own. We have the Microtech SOCOM Elite, which I love. This is from 2018. Uh, also, not an easy knife to get right now. I'm really hoping that this stuff that's hard to get comes back so everybody can get their hands on it. Drop point and tumbled on that guy. We have the uh, Protec SNG. This one's in titanium. Um, this is from a long time ago. Number two of 40, I think is what it says right there. This was a gift from a really good friend, Jeff. Uh, 154CM and flame titanium. That's actually from quite a while ago. We have the Chavez 229 Redemption. Um, which I just absolutely love. This is the Riot built one, M390 in titanium. Solid titanium, not milled at all. Um, definitely a uh, huge fan of that guy. Those pop up periodically. What's this one? We got the uh, Spyderco Delica in uh, the Sanmai Damascus, VG10 Core Damascus and titanium. This was a gift from my wife, which I still carry on special occasions. Um, we have the, and actually so was the SOCOM and so was the... Um, the uh, combat throw it on. Um, we have another gift from my wife. This was the Lion Steel TRE. This was actually the first gift from my wife. Um, I still love this. this is, they call it the TRE or three rapid exchange because it has a removable flipper tab, which I've still got in the box for it. And then it's got the thumb disc. So you technically have three different setups. You can go flipper tab, thumb, it's not really a disc, studs thing. And then you can remove both of them and it makes it a little more legal in some areas. Um, we have the, and this has a code. I always forget. I wonder if it says on it. Um, this is the, uh, uh, Reich, uh, and I, it's got a number on it. It's like the 1609 or the 1906. I can't remember exactly what it is. This is beautiful. This was a gift from a viewer. We've got the, uh, marble, blue marble carbon fiber inlays, M390 blade, um, and just absolutely wonderful. I mean, the design is beautiful and the ergonomics are beautiful. This is great. I actually have not re reviewed this knife yet. I really need to. I really like that one. Up here, for whatever reason, I've got the Rat 1. Everybody has seen the Rat 1 before. And of course, right next to it, we have its little brother, the Rat 2. Another size comparison knife. What's right here? Uh, yeah, the Benchmade Mini Griptilian, another size comparison knife. Everybody's familiar with that if you've been watching my channel. We have the Spyderco PM2, another size comparison knife. Great knife as well. We have the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Yet another size comparison knife. I think I have them all in a row here. Um, and then we have the Spyderco Para 3 Maximates. Uh, this is one that I carry a lot. Another gift from my wife. Another size comparison knife. We have the brand new Protec Rockeye, now in S35VN. I think these will be available very, very soon. I'm a huge fan of that. In fact, that's my favorite automatic fully knife of all time. We have the Titanium uh, Ace Biblio, which was a gift from a viewer. I've been carrying this one a lot more lately uh, since it was sent in. Really, really cool. I like this guy. It's got a pretty heavy detent, and you really got to light switch it, but it is definitely a good size knife. It's still a, a knife that you can get a full purchase on. I also love the blade profile and opening hole and the fact that it's all titanium. Big fan of that. So VV Praxis, you guys know that this is one of my favorite budget knives of all time. You can definitely get these right now. They're like 40 bucks. Um, what's this one? Oh yeah, of course, the Benchmade Mini Crooked River Custom, which was another gift from uh, an awesome viewer. Uh, definitely will be hanging on to that forever. We've got a 20 CV blade, blue G10, black bolsters, blue pivot collar, nice clip, blue backspacer, really neat. One of the biggest boys in here, uh, the Cold Steel SR1 Lite Tanto, because I gave my drop point away here on the channel. Um, this hasn't been used as much as the drop point one yet, but that's definitely gonna be a dedicated beater. We have the one knife in here that's not mine. Uh, this is the Kershaw Blur. That's my wife's knife, who it's still down here. <laughs> um, that's a knife that I gave to her. We have, uh, in my opinion, probably the greatest budget knife of all time, the Civivi Ortis. I really like this one size and all the different, like the opening mechanism and just the profile and how they did everything. 9CR18MOV, again, about a $40 knife, really good. You can definitely get it right now. Another 
Excellent budget knife, the CJRB Feldspar. This is the larger one. This is D2 and Contour G10. Highly, highly recommendable knife for those of you who are on a budget or just looking for something that isn't super expensive. Another excellent, amazing budget knife. This is the QSP Penguin. Um, and it's in, this is the S35VN variant. Normally they come in D2 for about 30 bucks. The S35VN variant I think was 60, 65. We have my newest, um, Lightning OTF. The reason that the, all the different colors of Lightning OTF, the, like the reason it seems like I've got a whole bunch of different colors of these is because I keep buying them and then giving them away as gifts to friends here locally. <laughs> Since you're totally, you know, everybody in here in Kansas can carry these. They're just fun gifts and people are always shocked that you can have, like there's so many people who have never handled an OTF and they're shocked that they're legal. So I always give them as gifts, right? Just be like, here you go. It's a great, the lightning OTF is a great little tool. So my newest one is green. I'm sure eventually I'll give that one away and get a different one. We have the uh, Cold Steel Tough Light, which is still um, wearing the damage from the last time that I beat the crap out of it. Great little uh, budget knife. We have the CJRB Crag. Um, which is in, this version's in AR RPM 9 and is black with the carbon fiber. I kind of like the red pivot color on there as well. We have the new and super duper cool uh, AD, AD 20.5s. These are not available yet, but they should be available here sometime this summer. This is the Shark's Foot variant. We're looking at OS 10 a. I always say that because people, they hear OS and they go, nope, OS 8. It's not OS 8. It's also not OS 10. It's OS 10A, which is the best of all three. And then we have uh, another one, the exact same thing, except it's in the drop point or clip point blade, depending on how you define that. These are, um, like I said, OS 10A, and then we have Grivery, and then on the inside, we actually do have a reinforced uh, steel liner. Can we get in there? Yeah, you can see the lip of it right there. So there is steel on the inside. We have the new... Hot topic of the knife world, the uh, Civivi Elementum button lock. This is in the red marble carbon fiber and uh, the uh, Damascus, stainless Damascus blade. Um, yeah, it works exactly the way that you'd imagine. You know, you just push that button and kind of, it just comes out. You don't necessarily have to whip it. You can kind of turn it and let gravity do that. And then you can, you know, just push that button and let it drop. I've got a review coming. You guys will see that here soon. The, I don't know why this guy is so far down here today. The Titanium Shaman, uh, the closest to Excalibur knife, right? Flytanium scales. Um, we've got the uh, MXG Deep Carry Pocket Clip, Flytanium Backspacer, and this is a standard one in S30V. So love this knife for sure. And last but not least, we have the CJRB Rhea, another incredibly excellent budget knife. Uh, in fact, if you like smaller knives and you're in the market for a more budget-friendly knife, it's kind of hard to beat this guy at what, $37, something like that, maybe 40 bucks. These are in 12C27N. I think they make an AR RPM 9 version of that. The knife that's over here to the side that wasn't sitting in there is, um, boy, I forget, honestly, I forget which Victorinox this is. That's the first one I'm not gonna be able to name for you guys. And then there's a bunch of stuff over here that's either brand new that was sent and given by viewers or by retailers or manufacturers that I just don't have sorted yet. I do still have my sliding glass case that I store some stuff in, and I've got a third knife case that's hung way up on the wall. Um, it's just, this is this is all one gigantic, like, progressive sorting system. Um, but the case was meant truly to house a lot of the more expensive stuff and to keep everything that might have otherwise been within reach. Like, my kids don't come down here. But if they ever do, uh, it's to keep a lot of this stuff that is would have been reachable. It's to keep it completely and totally out of reach or inaccessible. Um, so and so far it has done that. But they also don't really seem to be concerned with whatever's back here. So yeah, um, I think that's pretty much it today, guys. I hope that I gave you all of the information that you were looking for uh, in this video. Um, like I said, please join me tonight for the live stream at 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. Or if you're watching this in the future and you're like, what are you talking about? You know, this is not Saturdays at 9 o'clock Central Standard Time is usually when I do my live streams. So if you're watching this the day that I uploaded it, please join me. Please make sure to subscribe. That means so much to me right now. Um, like I said, if you want to check out Patreon, it's down in the description. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, like I said, go ahead and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, 
and have a great day.